Hi everyone, uh, just waiting for the people to join and we'll get kicked off in about 30 seconds. Hello and welcome to the Christmas edition of Geek Out. My name is Chris Cassessa, a Solutions Engineering Manager here at NetUp, and I'll be your host geek for today. Uh, today we have several guests to discuss NetUp's premier technical conference, Insight, which was held in Las Vegas at the end of October. Uh, we have about 45 minutes, uh, so please ask your questions in the chat window as we go along and we'll do everything we can to get those answered for you at the end. Uh, remember, the best questions uh, are up for some great prizes. There's some swag giveaway there. So let's get into it. Uh, Andy, as one of our guests, let's start with you. Um, where are you from? What do you do? And how can people get in contact with you? Great. Uh, thanks, Chris. First, I'd like to say thanks for having me along today. Very privileged to be part of these uh, this great session and uh, looking forward to the to hearing the group's input. Uh, my role, uh, Andy McKinnis, I work with uh, formerly Dimension Data, now as I'm sure most of us are aware, NTT. Uh, my role is a data centre sales specialist, so I work in a national role really working with our uh, customers as they work through their digital transformation and making, uh, more often than not, making what is, is often a very complex process uh, real world, tangible, deliverable, and executable uh, in, a, in a real world to make sure that our, our customers are working through the complexity of a digital transformation with a partner that's uh, experienced and trusted in this space. Beautiful, and how can people get in contact with you? Uh, my email uh, is andymckinnis at uh, global.ntt, or like we can post my mobile as well, feel free to reach out. No problem at all. Hey, did, did you actually uh, win something recently? Andy? Yeah, yeah, I did. I'm a bit shy about that. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just uh, was nominated and was lucky enough to award to be awarded uh, one of the uh, the NetApp specialist uh, selling roles uh, nationally. So very pleased to get that award from George and shake his hand and say good day. It was very good. So Alliance Partner Champion. I That's understand. right. Yes. What, a, what a great title. Well, congratulations on that. It's great to have you along. So uh, thank thanks you for joining us, uh, Yarek. Uh, and yourself, sir. What, uh, how, what's, what's your name? Where, where do you work? And, and how do people get in contact with you? Yeah, no problem. Um, again, I also want to say thank you for having me on, um, and also inviting me out to Insight. It was an amazing experience out there, being my first. But yeah, I work at Global Storage here in Melbourne. Um, we're a global company, and yeah, cloud solutions providing backup DR, uh, IaaS, and archive and long-term um, storage retention. So um, yeah, I've uh, been working there for 13 years now, and I've seen a transition from being a system integrator to now what commonly known as a cloud solutions provider. So, yeah, really um, enjoying the role there. So, yeah. Excellent. Again, great, great to have you on board today. Uh, and again, how, how is the best way to get in contact with you? Um, yeah, email is probably uh, the best, but I also have a Twitter handle, but email is yarek.p at global hyphenstorage.com.au and my Twitter handle is just Yarek Petrovsky. Excellent, thanks for that. Now, I also understand that Global Storage took out uh, a gong as well at our partner awards the other week uh, with George. So uh, I, I understand new partner of the year was, was the, the award. So again, congratulations to yourself and, and, and the company there. Yeah, no uh, Yotis, over to you sir. What, uh, What's, what's your role within NetApp and, and how can people get in contact with you, mate? Yeah. Hi, Chris. Yeah, Yotis Harper. I'm a pre-sales solutions engineer here at NetApp, so uh, based in the Melbourne office. Uh, it was actually my first insight uh, in, in October this year. I had a really terrific time. It was a great experience. Um, really keen to share some of the knowledge and some of the the, uh, the learnings that we picked up in the, during the conference. Um, you can get in touch with me at Yotis, so Y-I-O-T-I-S, at netapp.com. 
and uh, more than happy to entertain any questions uh, you have uh, following on from this uh, Geek Out session, which we're super excited to do. Excellent. Thank you very much. And, and last but by no means least, uh, Wojtek, uh, can you let us know your role here at NetApp and, and how people can get in contact with you? Sure. Hi, hi Chris. Hi, hi, everyone. It's great, great to join you at, at the session today. I'm uh, Wojtek Malewski. I'm the Solutions Engineering Manager. So I'm Chris's counterpart in the South or the Mexico. I look after the Enterprise South Solutions uh, Engineering team and I also look after the team in, in our federal district in Canberra. Um, so probably the best way to get in touch with me would be over LinkedIn. Um, so if you search for me under Wojtek uh, Malewski, I don't think there's too many of Wojtek's on LinkedIn, so you'll be able to find me. Um, and if you want to send me an email again, Wojtek.Malewski at netapp.com. Excellent. Great. So yeah, Wojtek, now you've, you've actually been to Inside a couple of times now. Uh, did you sort of see anything that was different this year to last year and, and provide some insights around Insight as a whole? Yeah, uh, absolutely, Chris. So, so as, as, you, as you know, Insight has been a, a bit of a geek fest for us for a number of years. So it started off even before my time at NetApp as, as really a, a training platform for our SEs um, and some of the professional services teams. And I actually, I've, I've attended Insight for the first time last year, and, it, and it, it, it started evolving. We started introducing a lot of our partners to, to the conference and our key customers to get broader exposure, uh, get closer to our products and services. Uh, so, so this year was probably the first time where we really transformed the Insight conference in a big way to be a more of a, a partner and customer-focused event. So, um, so essentially from from my perspective, uh, I've seen the content to be very much focused on some of the use cases, really sharing the learnings from our customers around the world and how they, how they leverage data fabrics in our solutions. Uh, in terms of the, 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 the format of the session, there was a couple of interesting things around uh, introduction of what we call the mega session, uh, which was basically like a catch-all session for a number of our key uh, highlights and announcements as part of it. Uh, we still ran a lot of the quite technical tracks, so they um, I'm just looking at the numbers here. We had over, I think, 150 unique sessions that were repeated throughout over the three days of the, of the conference. Uh, obviously, very, very strong presence from our both technical partners and, and some of the, uh, the hyperscaler partners at the inside central show floor. So there was obviously an opportunity to, uh, to go and visit the stands for, from the likes of you know, Microsoft, Google, AWS, Rubrik, Commvault, NVIDIA, so great presence across the board from all our partners um, and, and, and a number of opportunities for our customers in particular, which I, I did participate in actually with, with Yarek with executive sessions. So, that, so there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a number of executive sessions that we, uh, that we schedule for, uh, for, our, for our key customers and partners to get closer to the executives and get the, get the views on the, on, the, um, on the actual conference and some of the strategies we've been uh, communicating as part of it. So, so I think overall, a uh, fantastic conference, about 4,000 attendees. Um, uh, a lot of people got certified as well, so we had a few partners actually attending and certifying, getting the certs for free. Um, so yeah, I, I hope it's, it's going to be twice as big next year. Sounds fantastic. So just on that, you mentioned you, you uh, sat with Yarek on a couple of the exec visits. Yarek, what, how did you find, it was your first insight, right? So um, yeah. how, did you find, how, how did you find the conferences in general? Um, yeah, after the long flight, um, you know, you always sort of dread that long flight in, uh, back in the um, yeah, cattle, cattle class. But when I got there, um, yeah, I got, got my things and sorted. And when I went to the conference, the buzz and the vibe was fantastic. Uh, I think the main thing that I found was just the networking, meeting the people face to face. It's not just an email or a, or a tweet here that you're um, engaging with those people. You can now have a conversation and develop those um, relationships. Uh, Especially, I found when I went into the um, Insight Central um, section, I was able to meet some of the partner ecosystem, the eco partner systems in terms of um, how they can assist with our delivering our service levels um, out at um, global storage. So, whether it was you know meeting with the Rubrics, the Veeam, the Arrow guys, uh, I found that very um, yeah, um, valuable. Uh, I enjoy the the groupings of the different types of. Um, Sections, so yeah, the AI, the 
machine learning and automation side, you had the um, sort of the management side, and then you had the cloud data fabric area. So it was really organized really well. Um, I found that every break that I had, I was ready to go to a new booth to um, discuss some of some of the new features or new functions that have NetApp have brought out and products. So um, my goal is to always go out um, to these conferences and bring something back to Global Storage that can provide better efficiencies or, or uh, better service levels for our customers. So that's my, my goal. And I found that I was able to bring back a number of things that I could um, implement pretty soon to assist um, providing better customer services. Excellent, great news. So after you unfolded yourself out of uh, economy class on the way home, you know, you, you had all that to share with, with the company. So that's great yeah, news. That's right. Uh, what about you, Andy? You, you had, what was your key takeaway, I guess? From, yeah, from look, uh, I had a great time as well. A couple, a couple of uh, things that I, that I was a little bit, uh, I, I guess I was just surprised at the scale and the amount of involvement that there was there from customers and partners. Yeah. It was quite eye-opening from a boy from the stick in Australia to get exposed <laughs> to that level of, uh, of scale was very interesting. The thing that, that I took away was really around the, I guess, the unifying story of being data-driven and data-focused and how, you know, this is a, this, the world that we're in at the moment is really is transitioning from a traditional on-prem where you had a storage vendor and that's what you focused on. The, the world's more and more, and we see it every day, moving to a much more data focused across a hybrid platform. Um, and the ability to uh, of NetApp as a whole to have a congruent message to the market around how to execute on that, yep. um, acknowledging the real challenges that the customers are facing and then how to deliver those into a real world. Uh, I found hugely insightful. So I really enjoyed my time. Certainly great from a connectivity and a networking perspective. Uh, probably a few too many beers involved in the networking portion of it. Uh, but overall, just a fantastic effort. Very welcome by the NetApp team and uh, got to know a lot of uh, high quality resources that we can get to use, leverage moving forward. Brilliant. Okay, that's fantastic. And I know if, like you would have experienced the our friends at DreamWorks. Uh, yeah, the key yeah but That's always a great, you know, yeah. data fabric story. Yeah, the quality great. of the presentations actually was great. It, yeah. it was, felt like you were at a rock concert some of the time oh, wow, with, the, yeah. with, the, with the, the amount of effort that went in. So it was, uh, it was yeah. brilliant. Okay. Right, thanks for the summary, guys. Uh, uh, let's, let's jump into it, guys. It's, uh, Boy, Zek, back to you. What, what was sort of the big announcement that you uh, took away? And, and can you share some of the details of that with us, please? Um. Sure. So, so, so I guess the, the, the highlight of what we tried to do, I guess, for you guys today, we sat down with the team to, to really look at some of the, the main announcements. And just, just to be frank, there was all the, if I, if I did a full count of all the both services, product and partnership announcements, there was over 30 different ones. But I did want to highlight one specific one around Keystone. Um, so if you, um, if, if you really look at where we started uh, around five years ago with our with our data fabric strategy, uh, and we've been really building up on it and, and, and uh, creating a lot of the services and solutions that now underpin it and effectively uh, moving it to more of a as a service component. Uh, one of the one of the really real elements that that stood out and really I think was the was the umbrella announcement across all all, all the other smaller announcements at at, uh, at Insights was uh, was Keystone. Uh, and Keystone to me sort of looks like the, the missing bit of the data fabric strategy. So if you think about data fabric, over time it was, it was made up from, from a collection of different services and, and also uh, the experiences and the, and the partnerships we built with, with the hyperscalers like AWS, Azure and GCP. Uh, but now we're moving into this, to, the, to, this, to this stage where we can actually operationalize it and, and start delivering that whole solution more as a more more as a business innovation rather than you know a technical innovation. So I think it's it's a um, it's a great platform for us, great program of works. And essentially, what uh, what we've what we've looked at, if you if you looked at if you look at the market, really the sort of the key the key areas that uh, that the top CEOs we interviewed uh, in order to deliver on the you know digital transformation challenges. Is, is the first one is what uh, what George Kurian, our CEO, uh, you know, referred to us as speed being the new scale. So if you look at the uh, the, the speed of change in order to respond back to the both the the application demands and the customer 
demands that are that are that are customers and partners being put under, it is it is essential that that they can respond, you know, at cloud speeds. Uh, the 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 other important part of it, which we believe we address as part of the Keystone announcement, is how we address the data elements. So obviously, data is at the heart of NetApp. It's always been. So it's really being able to access that data, make it available in the cloud consumption model, uh, regardless if it is on-prem or, or whether, or whether the, the, the customer is cloud-born and choose to uh, leverage it in the hyperscaler, or whether it's a, it's a hybrid multi-cloud solution, which, which is becoming really the de, facto, um, the de facto standard for us for many of the deployments. So, so we see more and more customers uh, leveraging multiple clouds, you know, um, and, and obviously still with a lot of uh, reliance on the on the application that have been transformed or that cannot be transformed uh, that are that are still on, on premises. Right? So I'll, I want to take you a little bit through uh, through, through some of the more details of, of Keystone and how it's put together. Um, we, we've got a lot more collateral, so so I'm trying I'm trying to do as much justice in the few minutes I've got to cover it off. Uh, but in terms of obviously the the response we had from the market. And from the analyst, it was very well received. And, uh, and like I said, it's it, to me it looked like the, the really the missing component to really deliver on our on our data fabric uh, journey, which which we've started on a uh, number of years ago. Uh, so if you look at the at the elements, one of the elements that we tried to simplify, and there's there's a number of uh, simplification activities that that underpin uh, Keystone, was to really provide customers with a cloud-like. Uh, model of, of ordering those services, regardless whether they are on-prem or already in a cloud of day leveraging, you know, services like, you know, CBO uh, or CVS uh, from NetApp already. Um, so essentially, it's, it's really looking at selecting your performance team, uh, whether it's, you know, it's high-performing workload, standard or, or a value team. Uh, then you've got a choice of selecting uh, whether, whether, whether you're looking at block storage, file storage object, we also including our hybrid uh, cloud infrastructure, you know, HCI infrastructure as part of it, uh, which which adds uh, obviously compute with block storage, and then selecting how you want to manage the system. So whether you want it to be fully managed by NetApp, or perhaps uh, we've got partners in play as well that that uh, that can provide uh, that as a service from one of our partners, or if you choose to pay for it uh, as as you currently consume. Um, your, you know your, your cloud services, so there's an option to self-managing as well. In terms of the, the the uniqueness of the of the Keystone program is that it is all on NetApp books. So as opposed to some of the other programs you've seen in the market, they typically are leasing models or sophisticated leasing models. In case of uh, Keystone, is is undertaken by NetApp, so it's a full investment from us in, in our partnership in our technology with our customers and partners, uh, you know, with, with the solution. Uh, the ability to elastically uh, scale, so that's obviously key, you know, a characteristic of a cloud-like service where you can increase your workload and your capacity based on, on, on specific, you know, requirements. Uh, and then obviously the last and, and not least is through the relationships we formed with the hyperscalers is really the choice of the cloud you want to leverage as part of the you know data fabric as a service, the Keystone solution. Okay, a little bit more details. So I, I will, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, we're going to dive into some of the underpinning characteristics of what Keystone does in some of the updates from from Yodis later on. Uh, but essentially, as I mentioned before, the the easy purchasing button that was something that we we worked on uh, for. There was quite a challenge for us. Uh, for some of you that have been exposed to, to NetApp conf configs, they can be quite complex, you know, multiple pages with, with different line items, uh, hard to decode. So we tried to simplify that process. Uh, we've launched a new product also, uh, NetApp Explorer, so explore.netapp.com. You can actually go through a very simple process to identify what particular product is the, is the right fit for you just by answering a number of easy questions. And the idea behind this program is that we will present you with a simple, one-page configuration describing the system, the software, and the support services. So essentially three major sections uh, to outline that. Um, uh, the other two important things that we, that we are providing as part of Keystone is obviously we're extending our efficiency guarantees, uh, which we've already been providing for, for a number of years, but that, that's part of the Keystone, um, Keystone messaging. And, and, and something that I think is, more, is unique to NetApp in terms of our capabilities around 
both the performance and availability guarantees with Keystone. So we want to stand behind a product, behind the solution that we deliver to our customers. Uh, so we are quite confident that they will be able to uh, get the performance levels they're expecting and also the availability of the systems they, they're deploying. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get Jonas to touch on, on the, some of the Keystone uh, smart health checks, which really part of the active IQ messaging. Uh, so I'll, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. Uh, but the last one is, is really the ability to scale it the way we scale our cloud services. Uh, you know, having a lot of those, those services activated through, a, through very much like, like currently our customers are, are comfortable using Cloud Central and leveraging a lot of those tools to activate those services on-prem, uh, for example. Uh, and and another, another interesting area that we're getting into Keystone is uh, smarter, flexible credits where some of those credits can be translated to, uh, to, to leverage services, for example, in, uh, in hyperscale. Right? So, so, so it gives the customers the ability to shift their workloads if they choose to move them to, a, to AWS, for example, or, or Azure. Uh, I just on that, uh, I guess what, what I wanted to ask here, especially for, um, for, for Yarrick, is, is you know, coming from partner, do you sort of see this sort of thing as being able to help grow your business as well? So when you bring on additional customers and so forth, having you know, the strength of, of NetApp by, behind you there to you know, grow in, in that elastic type way, much like the cloud providers do, um, and you know, offering these as additional service catalog items for, for you to actually grow out what, what you guys have to offer as well. Yeah, sure. Um, as you know, we've been uh, consuming um, NetApp Store for several months now on a consumption-based uh, model. And I first have to say, in terms of, uh, it's not just, you know, we get some tin on the ground and you consume it and then when you, you know, hit a certain threshold, it gets some more tin. Um, the amount of extra service that we've been experiencing from NetApp has been fantastic. Um, making sure we get the best bang for our buck in terms of our storage. Um, so what that allows me is give me the confidence that I can deliver to my customers their service levels that we're providing to them. So essentially we're a customer, while we're a partner, we're also a customer of NetApp and they're providing an SLA to us, which then I can guarantee that onto our um, customers in our eyes or in our hybrid um, our implementations. So in terms of um, how we um, yeah, move forward with that, I, I feel like it gives me um, the ability to now go out and create that hybrid crowd and um, service level agreements on premise as well and bringing that data into um, our IS farm as well. So yeah, I, the, the, um, the Keystone uh, consumption based model has provided uh, me like, as I mentioned for the confidence, um, the ability to add extra services, including not just our IS underlying storage, but also storage as service. So we now our ability to deliver um, I'd say hyperscaler based uh, storage as a, as a service to our customers because of the because of the, um, the capabilities of the on tap system and also uh, through the service delivery that NetApp has been able to provide via this Keystone um, consumption based model. Excellent, that's, that's fantastic news. I guess yeah, there was there was a lot of, of buzz around uh, uh, Keystone after the announcement where people were just going right, tell me more about this and lots of things. So you know, I think this probably gives us. Uh, a really good insight into that and how it can impact you know, our, our broader community, uh, utilising our partners to, to do that as well. So back to you, Wojtek, I mean, is there just a wrap up on Keystone before we next jump to the next yeah, one? Yeah, so, so look, I, I think to wrap it up, I, I do want to I do want to do a bit of a shout out because uh, I'm, 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 I think we'll take a lot of pride in, in I guess, the Australian market and what we've done as far as consumption and modeling some of those services before even Keystone you know, originated. So as, as some of you might know, we've been uh, embarking on the, on the STAS journey for probably the last four or five years across a number of our customers. Uh, and, and a lot of those inputs have really been taken by corporate teams that form part of Keystone right now. So I think in terms of the team here in Australia, what we have done has been quite revolutionary for, for our business and also you know, big shout out to our professional services team that developed the, uh, the, the services engine, which really underpins some of the on-prem orchestration uh, and, and analytics around the, the, way, uh, the, way, uh, the way Keystone is delivered. So, so I think there's a lot of pride from, from the Australian team 
in what we've done and how that's now contributing to their corporate uh, business around Keystone. Absolutely. It's well, well and truly gone beyond just the, the regular storage as a service now, offering the full data fabric as a service from, from, from NetApp, I suppose. So, great messaging. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Yotis, from, from your perspective, uh, what did you see as one of the main messages out, out of um, Insight? Yeah, thanks, Chris. No, look, it, it was a great, um, it was a great conference, and what I want to do is, I think, Boytec did a great job of capturing the, the, the Keystone announcement. I wanted to sort of focus on a, a couple of products and, and some of the functionalities they provide, and then also the, the announcements that were that were done in tandem with, with Insight for these products uh, today. Um, the first being Active IQ. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Active IQ is our um, intelligence engine at, at NetApp. It's a, it's a cloud-based service that provides uh, predictive analytics and proactive support to optimize operations across the NetApp hybrid cloud. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll drill a little bit into it uh, and, and some of the announcements that were made at Insight in October. So if we, we move forward to here, as I said, Active IQ, it's, it's an intelligence engine. So it, it gathers over 10 trillion data points each month from 30,000 assets in the field, creating a, a multi-petabyte data lake, which is leveraged as a repository. So fueled by this very large, highly, highly diverse data community, uh, Active IQ has an abundant set of data from which to then derive wisdom or intelligence from. So using the latest predictive analytics and techniques, machine learning algorithms uh, that get smarter over time, Active IQ can then leverage that wisdom to give you actionable advice on how to reduce risks and get the most out of your NetApp environment. So the insights and recommendations are, are delivered through the, a web UI or a mobile app, uh, API driven. Um, and as you can see, you know, the, the slide really, it's a, it's a journey of capturing data, providing that intelligence, and then harnessing that to uh, provide a platform to, to produce action, so to speak. So what I also want to do was, was discuss on how this action is achieved and, and how Active IQ unlocks this actionable capability. So I'll jump to the next slide. Um, now, in order to create this actionable capability, we've harnessed the functionality of one of our tried and tested tools in, in Cloud Central, and that's Cloud Insights. Cloud Insights is a monitoring tool that gives you visibility into your complete infrastructure. So with Cloud Insights, you can monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize all your resources within your environment. And at uh, 2019 Insight, we announced a new action oriented workflow based on experience uh, from Active IQ, which leverages Cloud Insights ability to proactively take action and remediate and optimize environments. Now this is achieved in most parts by our wellness score. Um, so you can see that in the screenshot there, where we make it easy for people to, to see the health of their environment, which is benchmarked against NetApp best practice. So this enables ultimately users to easily identify red flags in their environment within their data ecosystem and make adjustments to optimize their environments as they need. So and also an announcement at Insight 2019 regarding Active IQ was the focus on reporting and, and really making this easier to see the value of, uh, of the product from a simplistic dashboard view. So the objective is here is for your non-traditional IT or non-traditional NetApp users to be able to jump on and at a glance really understand the health of their data from a high level. Um, some of the really cool things we, we were, that were announced regarding this product at Insight was, was the dashboard view and how customizable it was and how dynamic it was in its learning. So you can certainly customize the tiles to suit different systems within your data ecosystem and, and, and produce that live data uh, as it comes up. But it also learns, and if you're spending a lot of time doing separate, different activities in this, different systems, those tiles will automatically be displayed to you. So as I said, at a glance, you can then have that, uh, that live understanding and, and health of your environment. Um, and you don't need to be an expert to understand it. You can just jump on and it's intuitive. Um, I think one thing that I wanted to ask probably uh, Yarek as a customer advisor is how you've seen Active IQ and how you sort of saw uh, some of these announcements and insight regarding this product. Um, yeah, so being a, obviously we're consuming your um, computer and storage as a service now. Yep. Um, and we get a lot of the information is done, is done for us. But with that said, um, I'm able to log into Active IQ and Cloud Insights and essentially keep you guys honest to make sure you guys are on top and I uh, have all that visibility in you know, whether there's performance yep. issues, whether there's capacity issues. So um, 
Yeah, I, and like I said, you guys have been on top of it since then. So I guess it's basically like a, a um, truth metrics for me to know exactly what's happening in my environment. I can log in, have a look at, see what is actually being delivered, um, is actually what I'm asking for. And that's whether it's IOPS, whether there's um, per terabyte, or whether there's some issues that haven't been seen by the um, service delivery guys. So I, I'm excited by the integration to be able to provide SLA based driven storage moving forward. Sure. So it takes a lot of um, time away from maybe some higher end storage where I can start now provisioning storage based on IOPS yep. um, and start hanging that off to more to, to essentially our service desk. They can start provisioning storage based on a catalog using all the information that's been gathered with Cloud Insight. And I can trust that that, um, that storage being provisioned is going to meet, again, the SLAs that we're promising our customers without all the complexity of having to be a storage engineer is now starting to be wrapped up in this single pane dashboard. So for me, that's exciting. Like again, I said before, I want to bring things back to bring to, uh, to have efficiency back as a service provider, but also provide better service to our customers. And this without doubt does that. Yeah, excellent, excellent. No worries. So I, th I think that, that touches Active IQ. Next, I want to touch on another product that was uh, that was really spoken about in, uh, quite extensively at Insight, and that, that was our, um, our tool, Fabric Orchestrator. Um, now, Fabric Orchestrator is a tool which enables cloud architects and infrastructure administrators to quickly and easily uh, create hybrid cloud infrastructure infrastructures and, and tailor it to their needs really simply. Um, Fabric Orchestrator is a free tool. So you can use it to discover data, applications and services, connect them together and optimise your hybrid cloud environment to achieve a standard operating environment across your entire environment, which, which is really exciting. So I think, uh, I think the best way I had it explained to me uh, or, or summarise that insight was think of a self-populating Visio view of your environment, uh, which is, which is uh, I think a good uh, adjective to describe this tool. So moving forward, I, I, um, I thought today, I guess data just across multiple silos and therefore you're having to manage this data across a multitude of basic disparate and legacy tools. So think of the challenge of managing data in uh, AWS, Azure, in the data center and on-prem and having to, having to work through separate tools to, to make that happen. So Fabric Orchestrator solves this challenge by creating a centralized data control plane across a company's entire data real, uh, data estate. And, and uh, Fabric Orchestrator achieves this uh, via a number, number of steps. So first being uh, the scale of processes and policies across all your entire data estate. Um, that, that means you can set uh, the policies across, you know, from one location, from this single pane of glass, and then that's going to populate across all your silos of data um, as you as you grow, um, creating controls and automatically applying them to as data sets are made. So think of a, a, a auto discover capability where as new data is created, it gets automatically sectioned off to the to the create uh, to the correct area to make sure that it's um, organised and, and structured in the right way. Um, and then further enhancing that structured data by using cloud architecture techniques such as tags and labeling um, to, to make sure that all the correct information is, is uh, we have the right metadata across all the data repositories across your data fabric. Um, so think of uh, tagging critical HR information on a volume that can never be deleted. And therefore you, you remove the risk of anatomy accidentally or in, inadvertently deleting that volume. Um, speed and, and uh, performance is also a, a key feature across across all our tools and Fabric Orchestrator is no different. Um, and it can help you with this challenge here by placing or making sure access and proximity is always configured intelligently um, to make sure that latency is reduced and then you're getting speed and performance across your environment, across all your silos. Um, and then finally, I think enforcing data deletion. There's nothing worse than having data that you don't know about, costing you money, that type of thing. Obviously with, with Fabric Orchestrator, because it cuts across all the silos of data, it gives you information that lets you understand and interpret what that data is. And then you can make informed decisions on whether you need it, you can delete it if you need, ultimately uh, saving money and stopping that data buildup of you know, orphan data that you don't know about, which is really important. So, yeah, it's just on that too, I mean, that's, that's quite cool. critical for, for things such as GDPR, um, anyone within the finance industry or anything like that to know about what data is, is, is located where and what sort of things. So, you know, it's probably one of those critical factors within that, that solution set as well, right? 
Yeah, absolutely, Chris. I think that's a, that's a really good point. Um, really having an understanding of where your data is has never been more critical than, than today. So uh, Fabric Hook Australia is giving you that avenue to, to help give you that information um, easily and, and in a way that you can manage it. Um, now, under the covers a little bit, I want to talk about how it works. And we've sort of broken it down into into three layers and uh, how Fabric Orchestrator is, is used to sort of manage and optimize data across all those silos. Um, so I've broken it down and I'll just jump through it quickly because I'm, I'm conscious of time as well. But certainly the, the first being the, the orchestration layer where we can convert uh, intentions into actions. And as I said, no advanced administration um, skills required, single throat to choke, single pane of glass to manage across all your silos, which is important. The next layer being the, the API layer. And that's where NetApp have deployed a pool of APIs that can connect to all your data sets and that others can connect to to provide additional services. And that's where you're really getting that unified image of your, of your entire data set, which is super important. Then the final layer being the Data Hub layer. And this is where NetApp's leveraging things like machine learning and artificial intelligence to automate, monitor, and optimize your resources for predictive and then actionable insight. So here we've got uh, Fabric Orchestrator keeping an eye on things for you. So AI can, for example, reclaim storage space for you through tiering of cold data, or if you, uh, it'll spit out an alert if you need to renew a service contract before it expires, giving you that intelligence to stay on top of your environment uh, proactively. I guess these are some of the things that, um, that, that uh, were really discussed at Larger Insight and, and certainly our customers really enjoyed. Um, probably finally, just to touch on the one thing I wanted to ask you, you know, what would that um, enable you to do it at, um, as a customer to have that unified insight and vision of all your data silos? Sure. Um, I guess when you heard, when I went in, so you heard this whole data fabric notion, you know, it's this new concept for me being a new partner and sure, um, first insight. So, it's, so I heard all of that, I was like, how is this actually going to work? Like, what is this data fabric about? I think what the, the data, the NetApp Fabric Orchestrator showed when I went to see the demo is that you know, you're not just talking about it, you're providing the tools and the, and the ability to actually create and construct this um, data fabric. So I think it's, you know, it's, I reckon it's awesome, you know, to be yeah. able to see and visualize what all the data, how it's working, how it's um, connected, it's brilliant, so. Very good, yeah. yeah. Same side over here too, um, Andy. Oh, I was just going to—I was just going to add. I think it's a great conversation. What what I really enjoy about what we're moving into as an organisation partnering with NetApp is we're actually becoming more and more adept at delivering outcomes. So we're not just talking about technology in the background. We're able to have a, a proactive conversation with customers that talk around what are their problems and how do we help them deliver outcomes. So this whole. Uh, shift that's happening in the market and the way that NetApp are out ahead of it and providing partners an ability to deliver on outcomes is really critical to creating solid customer relationships moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. Okay, no, so no. Um, I, I guess there's, there's a bit more on the, on the more traditional aspect of, of where NetApp has come from. So, well, with, with only, uh, let's say, six minutes left to go, uh, Again, just a reminder that if you've got any questions, please throw them in the chat window and, and uh, remember that great swag we've got to give away. Um, but Yotis, do you mind just running us quickly through uh, some of the other aspects from, from the hardware on tap side and, and storage? Uh, sure, uh, pass over to Boydsec. I think yeah, it's some, some, yeah. some touch on some of the points with the traditional things that you mentioned there, Chris. We'll go through it really quick then. No, no problem. So challenge accepted. So you give me one minute to get <laughs> like 60 slides. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so look, I, I think a uh, couple of things I want to touch on uh, more on the, I would say, the uh, the expected part of, of Insight. There's always a, a swag of product announcements and software announcements. I do want to call out uh, to the latest Magic Quadrant from, from Gartner. This is, this is for the first time Gartner actually put together two different uh, quadrants. In, 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 if you look at last year, there was a separate one for all flash arrays and also a separate one for, for the hybrid systems. As of 2019, uh, Gartner's actually uh, put, put the two together. Uh, and, and that thing, you know, we take a lot of pride in our innovation uh, that NetApp has been recognized as the, as the market leader. And that covers obviously both block uh, and, 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 uh, and file storage uh, as a, as in, a, in a primary storage context. And I think that the main areas that really sort of helped us to and establish ourselves in a top position where around uh, data fabric story, in particular, uh, the capabilities we have 
with the hyperscalers and how we can leverage that, that entire fabric. And, and, and also some of the sort of innovations around, for example, being the first uh, to, 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 uh, to release a, a full end-to-end -end NVMe system to the market. So there's a number of you know, points that will be recognized in, in that respect. So moving on to, to some of the announcements just very quickly. Uh, so from a, from a product perspective, um, so uh, we've, we've announced uh, a new mid-range uh, A400 system. So probably the best way to look at it is, a, is a, it's an end-to-end -end NVMe system. It's basically like a smaller version of the A800 that we've announced last year. So, so if you think we, we're stepping it down to a more accessible platform uh, to our customers, uh, that's really where, where the A400 sits in. Uh, and then on the on the on the fair side, we've we've also released two new systems: uh, the mid-range uh, FAS 8300, which is essentially very similar architecture to the A400. Uh, and then and then on the on a high end, we brought in a new uh, FAS 8700. So so they both all those three systems will be released alongside uh, what they've been released with the with the latest OnTap 9.7. Uh, so, so again, I, I don't have a lot of time to, to jump into the specifics of Home Tab 9.7 because I want to cover off a couple of other important announcements, uh, but definitely, you know, the, the encourage you guys to have a look at uh, online and, and reach out to, to, the, to the sales and, and SE teams to have a look at it. Uh, <clears throat> so moving on a bit, uh, one, one area that, we, that w came as a little bit of a uh, surprise was the NetApp's release of a all send array. Um, and and you, you would ask, you know, NetApp obviously has been providing uh, send protocols for a number of years in a, in a, in a multi-protocol system. So why would we uh, go to market with an all send array? And if we look at our customer base, we, we still got a substantial, you know, base of our customers when they put, effectively, they silo the critical workloads on an all, all send environment. They don't really, you know, the, 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 the top, top, top of mind requirement is to provide this active active with instant failover and a continuous data availability for those systems. So we, we've effectively created uh, leveraging all the best of, of our ONTAP uh, services and, and taking away some of the, uh, some of the specific elements that, that we normally add to a system that, that, that provides file and, and, and NERS type of services is to create a, a, a effectively an optimized version of of our send array that is that is that is fully focused on on send only workloads. So that that platform will, it will, is available today on both our A220 and A700s uh, is as a, as, a, as a two cluster highly available active active configuration. So probably the easiest way to think about it it is on tap like like all our systems, but it's highly optimized. We've taken some of the uh, some of the specific functions that are not necessarily required in that all send high available state to provide that, that functionality. How are we going for time, Chris? So can we jump in quickly and just quickly yeah, touch we've the got one, one more to cover, guys. Let's uh, do the last one. Yeah, okay, cool. So, so, so on, the, on the storage grid, I'll I would, I would talk about the standout platform there because uh, I think the, the, uh, the SG. Uh, 6024 is a is, is a fair, is a world first all flash storage grid appliance for you know for for, for very very you know uh, very high performance workloads and I guess to give you a bit of context around it we've had a number of conversations with uh, with our customers in particular in the uh, in the manufacturing space when they've already were leveraging uh, an all flash uh, object store uh, type of appliances so we've seen an opportunity. Uh, to launch a product like that in the market, uh, so essentially you can think of that as a as as, as a platform focus on, on ingesting very high high you know very small object types. So for example, for IoT or manufacturing floors, and and then you know making that that platform as part of the bigger cluster. So adding into the into the overall storage grid family uh, and and leveraging our ILM rules to basically steer the traffic for the you know for the hot workloads into a all flash. You know, uh, storage grid appliance versus moving them onto a uh, onto a to, a, to, to, to like an SG sixty sixty. So, so that's probably the highlight. That the other one is the SG one thousand services appliance, which is really simplification of how we deploy uh, uh, storage grid to our customers, take, taking away some of the VM complexities we we dealt with in the past. 
Excellent. All right. All right. Thank you very much. We, we, we uh, have uh, reached the end of our time, unfortunately, but I just wanted to, final words from Yarrick, uh, summarising insight for you and, and key takeaways. Uh, yeah, uh, I'd say, I think Andy mentioned it a lot of times, it's, it's all the announcements, but actually being able to deliver to our customers, I think that was the key takeaway. Um, you know, it's not just this stuff on a, um, on a whiteboard being written up, it's actually being delivered and now I can confidently bring that stuff back and deliver that to my customers. Um, and with the assistance with the NetApp team here in Melbourne and globally, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to 2020. Uh, and uh, I think Insight, um, if you have me back, I'd love to go back. If anyone does have the chance to go, please go. Um, it's not just some slides, it's the um, networking, it's just the buzz, the feel, the excitement, and sometimes you learn something that you weren't even going into find out about, and then all of a sudden your mind goes down somewhere else. So yeah, it was really exciting for me as a geek. Um, yeah, I'd definitely love to get back again. So thank you. Fantastic. We'll have to work on uh, Boytech to get you an upgrade to business class next time. <laughs> Eddie, <laughs> you probably just uh, stole a bit of your thunder. Uh, yeah, no, look, from my point of view, uh, you know, we're all cognizant that data is becoming more and more critical to organisations. And I, I think organisations are really looking for a trusted pair of hands that are proactively thinking about what is the next innovation, how can we optimise our platform to be more data centric or more data capable. And, and NetApp is just constantly, uh, certainly through Insight, just constantly displaying how they're being proactive and thinking about the next version of how data can be utilised within an organisation. So I think there's a, a real acknowledgement from the market that the market needs a trusted pair of hands when it comes to data utilisation and, and NetApp's providing that partnership globally. So, um, I, you know, I, that's the clear message I take out of Insight. Fantastic. All right. Great. Well, again, thank you for everyone's time, team. I appreciate your inputs. Uh, we do have a couple of questions there that we will address after the fact uh, and uh, naturally come up and, and find or get the guys to vote on, you know, the swag to, to win uh, for, the, for those questions. So thank you for everyone for connecting in and uh, have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and, and see you again in the new year. See you later. Thanks, guys. Thank you all. Cheers. Merry Christmas, thank guys. You,